This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. You've been using SmartLine to place individual lines so far. The SmartLine does a lot more than that. And I want to delve a little deeper into the SmartLine functions in this video. Take a look at the tool settings window first. As you're probably aware by now, you have two segment types, lines and arcs. We'll stick with lines in this video, and I'll discuss arcs in the next video. The vertex type can be sharp, rounded, or chamfered. We'll leave sharp on for the moment. And join elements can be on or off. We'll leave that on too for the moment. And you can expand the tool settings window to show a couple more options. The first option here, rotate AccuDraw to segments. Simply make sure that the AccuDraw compass is aligned with the previous element. If you uncheck this option, then AccuDraw will remain square with the view, which is unlikely what you need. The second option is always start in line mode, meaning that when you start AccuDraw, the line mode will be the default method. If you turn this off, then the default method will be whichever segment type you used previously. Leave this option on, and now you can collapse the extra information. Now let me draw some elements using the different features. Lines and Sharp. I will turn Join Elements off to start with. I'm going to draw a square using the Distance Recall. And in this particular case, each segment is an individual line. You can tell that because it will highlight when you use the Element Selection tool and select a line. Each line is separate. If you actually select a line, you'll see just two handles. Back to Smart Line. Join Elements on. Let's draw the same square using the same distance recalls. Looks the same, but now with the Element Selection tool, the four lines are now a closed shape. And you can tell that because all four segments highlight, plus there are four handles on each corner. That indicates a closed shape. And you can double check by simply clicking and dragging, and the whole shape will move, which is different from the single lines, which only a single line will move. Now let's try the next option, which is rounded corners. Let me undo those previous figures. Let's draw a square again. And I've set the rounding radius to 75. We'll draw a different size square. Notice that as I place the lines, the rounded corners pop into place. We have join elements on. So as I snap back to the starting point and left click to accept it, the final corner is placed automatically. I can change the rounding radius as I draw. I do not have to stop the tool to change the rounding radius. Change it to 150, and I have a 150 radius. Change it, say, to 200, and the 200 radius appears. Back to this corner, left click, and there's my final corner. Now let's try chamfered. Undo those two. Change rounded to chamfered. Bring that back to 75, and draw the square again. Notice the corners are now chamfered. And as always, I can change the chamfer dimension. Now it's 150. Larger chamfer. Back to the starting point, and there we are. Now you may have noticed something happening to the tool settings box as I close the shape. Let me undo this one and show you what I mean. Right now, I'm going to take Join Elements off. I'll leave chamfered as the vertex type, and draw the square again. Now notice as I come towards the starting point, if I find the snap point, nothing happens at the moment to the tool settings window. But let's say I discovered that I really do need a closed shape, which means that I would have to turn Join Elements on to close the shape. I can still do it but only if I place a manual tentative point at this location. So, manually tentative point, 
This allows me to go to the tool settings window without losing my place marker in the drawing. I can now turn join elements on and I can choose to have it as a closed element or not. I'll leave closed element on and I can also make settings with the area and fill type as well. I'll accept that. And if you notice now, we have a chamfered final corner, which we wouldn't have had before. If I left click now to accept that, now I have a closed shape with four chamfered corners. Let me do that again a different way. Join elements is on this time. Let's draw the square again. Now notice as I get to the starting point, the tool settings window expands to show me those same options. But if I wanted to change the options, if I try to move the cursor into the tool settings window, I can't because as soon as the snap point disappears, so do the options in the tool settings window. So the answer here again is a manual snap at this point. So manual snap. This locks a tentative point into place and it also locks the tool settings window. I can now go in and make whatever settings I need if I need them. I left click and I finish the figure. Now that manual snap will become important a little later, so please keep it in mind. As always, I have some exercises for you. Here's the first one. I'm going to draw this fairly complex shape. It has two different radiuses and a chamfer. So let's start with rounded. The start point is here, and you may think that this will be the first radius but it isn't. That's the first radius, as you'll see. So I have a 100 millimeter radius to start with. So rounded and 100 millimeters. Join elements is on. So I'm going to start my first point here, dragging this way. I'm drawing the figure counterclockwise. The first dimension is 750, and the first radius, which is this corner, is 100 radius. My 100 radius is preset. I draw the line and my first dimension is 750. I type 750, left click and drag and there's my first rounded corner. Now I drag upwards and the next dimension is 1070. I left click for that corner. Now as you notice this upper right corner should be a chamfered corner but of course it's projecting as a rounded corner right now. I need to change the parameters so rounded becomes chamfered and the chamfer offset becomes 200. Now I'm dragging the chamfer. Now a very important point here. That chamfer won't be set until I place the next data point. In other words, at this point I could change any of the parameters in the tool settings window as I just did. But until I place the next data point I won't actually place that chamfer. Next dimension is 600. Now I can data point, which will set the chamfer corner. And of course I'm dragging a chamfer corner again. I need a rounded 250 radius. So we change to rounded and 250. There we go. I'm dragging my 250 corner. And as it happens, the final corner at the starting point is also 250. So I can simply come down, find the snap point, and there's my second 250 radius. But if that last radius was not 250, or if it was sharp, or if it was chamfered, how do I change at this point, since the data point that I'm about to place will set that corner? Well, the answer again is a manual tentative point. If I place a manual tentative point right now, I can go into the tool settings window and make any changes I need to the final corner. I need a 250 corner anyway, so I'll simply accept that corner. And there's my finished element. So remember the two things which are of significance here. Each corner is set when you place the next data point. In between that time you can make any changes you want to the parameters of the corner until you place the next data point. And going back to the starting point, if you need a different corner from the previous corner, then use a manual tentative point, make the settings you need, and then accept the corner. And one final point, as you're working around this figure, if you make a mistake in a line segment, you can undo that segment using Control Z, and only that segment will be undone. Any previous segments will remain in place. 
and then you can carry on with the segment that you've undone. And as always, you'll find this particular exercise in a file SmartLine PDF in your Working Files folder. Let's try another example. This time let's look at line strings rather than closed shapes. Same conditions apply, particularly regarding placing a corner with the next data point. There's the figure I'm going to draw, and I'll start over here. Here's my first data point. The first corner is a chamfered corner with a 225 chamfer. So I need chamfered and 225. First dimension is 400, and left click to accept. And there's my chamfer. The next dimension is vertically and 600. And at this corner, I need a sharp vertice. But first I have to confirm the previous chamfered corner. So I'll accept the 600, which locks the chamfer corner. I need to revert back to a sharp corner for the next corner. And carry on in this direction with a dimension of 1070. Left click, that locks the sharp corner. Now I need a rounded corner with a radius of 300. And the dimension in this case is 675. Left click to lock the previous corner. The next radius is 225. And I have an offset of 400 by 900 for the next corner. Make sure AccuDraw is active. And enter my offsets using the rectangular compass. So 900 in this case, up arrow or down arrow, and 400. There's my offset point. Left click to confirm the previous 225 radius. And now I need a sharp vertice and a final dimension at right angles of 375. Left click, right click, and I'm done. Now, as you can see, this is a relatively complex line to draw. But the combination of AccuDraw and SmartLine makes the job really quite easy. But you have to take a little time to think about the drawing process. To draw this line string without AccuDraw and SmartLine would involve the use of several drawing and editing tools. But using SmartLine makes the job very much easier. And again, this exercise is in your SmartLine.pdf file.